Hi everyone, welcome to today's Legal Wednesday. In today's video, I'll talk about what you need to know before hiring a lawyer. I know there are many myths out there about lawyers, and I feel that by sharing this information, it will help someone who needs to get legal services. Let me tell you a bit about myself. I am Ruth Tanui, an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. I'm also the founder and managing partner of Ruth Tanui and Company Advocates. Today, I'm going to give you eight tips that you need to look out for before hiring a lawyer in Kenya. My first tip to you is first find out the credibility of the lawyer representing you. The first thing you should do is do research on the lawyer that is representing you to ensure that he's actually an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. This can easily be done by logging into the Law Society of Kenya website and key in, keying in the lawyer's name or if you know the practicing number of the lawyer, you can also key in there to find out if he's is actually an advocate and if he's active in practice. My second tip for you is to discuss your legal fees from the beginning. Ensure that from the beginning before you do anything with your lawyer, you have written down your argument on your fees. This will help you avoid feeling that you have been you've been overcharged or, or feeling that you have paid more than you expected. So ensure from the beginning you have written down your, your legal fees. My third tip for you is to get a legal opinion first. A legal opinion is whereby an advocate gives you an opinion of how your case is going to go if it's taken to court. The pro In short, it just he'll give you the probability of your case, you winning or losing your case. So it's important for you to get that first. Remember, you'll be spending money to have this case handled. So ensure you first get a legal opinion. My fourth tip for you is to avoid non-written agreements. To ensure that you secure your interests, ensure that you have a written agreement with your advocate. This will help in ensuring that your interests are taken care of and you don't so that you don't if in case of any disagreement, at least there's evidence to show what you had agreed with with your lawyer. So it's very important to have a written agreement. My fifth tip for you is to ensure that you are up to date with your case. During practice, I've realized that most clients make the mistake of assuming that the case belongs to the advocate. Remember, this is your case. You're the one who, have, who, has, who has paid the advocate to prosecute your case. So ensure you're up to date with your case. Ensure that you're being updated of any progress in your case. If it's a mention, a hearing, or a ruling, because this case is yours and you, you must be up to date. Remember, this advocate might be having a lot of cases in their hands. So ensure you're up to date with your case at all times. My sixth tip to you is to remember that all that glitters is not gold. People have these assumptions that for your case to be handled properly, it must be handled by the big law firms. Remember, these big law firms handle, case, handle clients like big companies like Safaricom. So if you take your case there, it may not be given as much attention as a, a medium or a small law firm would have given it that attention. This is not in any case for me to blast big law firms. My point is your, your case can also be handled by medium or small sized law firms because for them, they are trying to build their clientele. So they'll give your case the attention that it requires. My seventh tip to you is to remember that you have the power when it comes to your case. People make the mistake of thinking that the decision should come from the advocate. Remember, the role of the advocate is to give his legal opinion, his or her legal opinion on regards to the law. But the decision should come from you. So ensure that you're the one making the decisions when it comes to your case. But of course, with the guidance of the legal opinion from the advocate. My eighth tip to you is that not all advocates are evil. People have this assumption that advocates are evil and some people make the mistake of opting to deal with non-advocates when it comes to legal matters. Remember, the best thing with dealing with advocates is that if the deal goes south, you can report the advocate to the disciplinary committee and the advocate might even lose his or her practicing certificate. Secondly, as advocates, we have something called the professional indemnity. In, for instances that God forbid the advocate dies, you'll be reimbursed any of your money. So I, I, I hope you see where I'm getting to and how it's important to deal with an advocate. I hope these tips have been helpful to you. I've also shared them in our website in detail. I'll put the link here on the screen. And also please don't forget to follow us on our Instagram page 
at Law Simplified 2020. I'll also put it here on the screen. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.